I've spent over a year testing out all kinds of different distributions for Linux. Uh, when I got started, I was a refugee of Windows heading to Linux, and I really didn't know what I was getting myself into. And hopefully this video helps you choose the right distribution or lead you down a path to something you might be happier with if you're already using Linux. Uh, to start out, like I said, I didn't know what to do and where to go, and I decided to use one of the worst starter distributions ever, Blend OS. And whenever I tried it, it was still in its infancy and it still kind of is, but that is definitely not a beginner's distribution. That is much more advanced and you really have to have an understanding of how Linux works before you really try to daily drive that distribution. Now, before we jump into the weeds, uh, for all you beginners that haven't used Linux at all, or you've looked at it five, 10 years ago in a virtual machine. Before we even talk about distributions, let's go ahead and get some of the confusion out of the way. A lot of people look at distros and they're like, oh, well, that one looks cool. This one looks cool. Oh, I like the desktop from this one. Oh, that one looks like it has a cooler interface. What you're looking at is different desktop environments, or they refer to them as DEs. The three desktop environments I'm gonna be talking about in this video are gonna be GNOME, KDE and Cinnamon. GNOME is gonna be more of a Mac user interface. KDE is gonna be more of a Windows-like experience with a start button and a taskbar. And Cinnamon is gonna be more of a Windows-like experience with a start button and a taskbar that most users are familiar with. Now, as far as the distribution of Linux, if it's uh, Debian-based, Ubuntu-based, Arch-based, or Fedora-based, what you're really talking about is the underlying package manager. The package manager is how you install and uninstall programs, as well as it connecting you to a repository for that distribution's available software or packages. Same difference. So I hope this starts to clear up some of the confusion. A desktop environment, or DE, is the look and feel how you interact with the screen, with your keyboard and mouse. Package management is the underlying software that each distribution has unique to itself, how it installs and uninstalls software and the software available in their repositories. I hope that kind of clears up the muddiness in the water before we get too far into this. Before we get on with the list, all of these distributions are compatible with running your video game and productivity software. Obviously, the video games need to be compatible with Linux, so it's easiest to check and see if they're Steam Deck compatible. If they are, they're gonna run on Linux. Your productivity software, you'll have to search and look at each different software title to see if it runs on Linux. There's too many to list. There's too many in a general overview to say, this is gonna work, that's not gonna work. The only thing that we can say definitely, as of right now, is Adobe software is not going to work. Most Microsoft products are not going to work, but there are fantastic alternatives to them. You just need to do some Google. Search on YouTube, search on Google for the specific software you're wanting to use or wanting to replace for Linux. Now with that out of the way, here's the list. All right, so first up on the list, we've got Linux Mint. That is a really, really great beginner's distribution. It's got a Windows-like interface. You'll want to download Linux Mint with the Cinnamon desktop. It's already uh, listed first on their website whenever you go to download it. However, there's a lot of confusion to the beginners. That's why I wanted to tell you about the different desktop environments before we got too far down this rabbit hole. Man, whenever I tried Linux Mint, everything just worked. It even recognized my printers on my network. It was, it was actually phenomenal. This is a really great distribution all around. It's perfect for beginners. It's perfect for your parents, your grandparents, your kids. Uh, it's, it's great for just about any kind of office work as well. It's really solid. Linux Mint is a great daily driver. It's not gonna blow your mind or anything as far as like whiz bang, crazy, cool shit that they're, oh my God, look at this crazy shit we're doing that no other distribution's doing. It's very much just based. It's, hey, you wanna get shit done? You want to live with a no fuss operating system? This is it. Next up on the list is gonna be Kubuntu. It is the KDE version of Ubuntu. Uh, so it gives you more of that Windows-like interface. The normal Ubuntu is gonna give you more of the Macintosh interface with GNOME as its default desktop environment. Kubuntu, I didn't daily drive for very long. I gave it a couple of days. I really don't care for snaps. It's a different kind of package 
that only Ubuntu distributions use, you'll start to understand snaps and flat packs and all those different things. As you get further down your Linux journey, the rabbit hole of all the different ways software can be packaged and installed on Linux. Up next, we've got Fedora. And I really enjoy Fedora. I like Fedora a lot. It's very stable. It's got a lot of packages. It's got a lot of great software available through their repository. It handles just about everything you throw at it with ease. It's it's a very, very solid operating system. Fedora generally has two major releases each year. So about every six months or so, it's gonna get a major kernel update. They do have point release updates in between, but that's what makes Fedora much more stable than Arch Linux is that they've got that time to really test the packages and the kernels before they release it to the general public. Now you can get on the bleeding edge release of everything. It makes the system more unstable, but talking about just Fedora in general, it's gonna be much more stable than Arch is. So if you're looking for an operating system that's rock solid and you're kind of loosening those training wheels, getting them off to where you're doing a little bit deeper dive into Linux, I'd say from Mint or Kubuntu, you would graduate to Fedora and you would learn its package management system. And if you're not worried about learning a package management system, you can just use the software store on any of these distributions and install your basic software on any of them. That's, you know, pretty much point and click and you're installed. You don't have to get into the terminal on any of these distributions if you don't want to. But when you do and you start to learn the terminal, it gets really fun and it gets really cool. Now, as of recording this, the only distribution I've ran across that actually sets up your printers by default out of the box is Linux Mint. I, Kubuntu's not gonna do it, Fedora's not gonna do it. I haven't ran across any other distribution that out of the box, you install it and it's found every peripheral that you've got plugged in, including the printers. Like, if you want a zero fuss, go back to Mint. But, you know, Kubuntu, Fedora, any of the rest of them, you're still gonna have to install things like your printer. You know, they're all gonna have your Bluetooth already installed to where you can hook up your Xbox controller, your mouse keyboard. That's that's pretty much default on any of these distributions. But if you, you're looking for a zero hassle distribution, stick with Mint, because it does your printers. Printers aren't that hard to install, but you know, it, there's a slight learning curve for just be aware of that. Up next, we've got Bazite. Bazite is badass. It's fucking awesome, I love it. I, I ran it for quite a while. You know, it, it's really great if you're gonna have a home console-like experience in your living room, but also for your desktop computer. I used it as a daily driver. It is way more complicated if you're using it for a daily driver. Like, you've really gotta dig into the operating system because it does a very strange way of package management because it's an atomic distribution, and I'm not gonna go too far into it, but it really complicates things if you're looking to make this an all-around daily driver for your desktop. But if you're just wanting to play video games, and you want to play emulators or Steam or whatever. You just want to turn on your computer, you want to turn on your Xbox controller or whatever controller you got and play your video game, this is the distribution for you. If you're looking for it for a daily driver, you need to be a little bit more advanced in your Linux knowledge to understand how to make this a daily driver. And you can make it a daily driver. I did it for several months and I, I really love it. The only reason I quit using this as a daily driver is because it's an atomic distribution of Linux and the way that it installs and handles packages, it makes it extremely complex when you get in and you want to make it a system that also does virtual machines and you want to install all kinds of different things to tinker with your system. This makes it much more difficult to do that. I don't want to go down the rabbit hole of why atomic distributions are so difficult. Just understand atomic distributions are not meant to be fucked with. They're not really designed for you to get in to the nuts and bolts of the operating system and tweak things and experiment with things. They're made atomic for a reason, so you don't break them. So as soon as you unlock the atomic operating systems and you get into the operating system itself, shit goes wrong really fast if you don't know what you're doing. So for a daily driver, that's why I switched away from Bazite. But if you just wanna play video games and you want zero fuss, this is the way to go. Next up on the list is Debian. Now I covered this in a previous video about servers, what you should do for a home server. And Debian, Debian is the GOAT, uh, the Diet Pi distribution of Debian, particularly for servers, is the GOAT. Um, for desktop use though, Debian is great. The only reason 
that I wouldn't use this for a daily driver is that Debian is slow like the tortoise. It is slow as fuck. Not in speed as far as it boots up and functions slow. It is slow as in it doesn't get kernel updates very fast at all. It doesn't get packages updated. It's a very, very slow release cycle. It's very, very stable and you're not going to have any problems once you get it up and going. It is the most stable Linux system out there, I would say, because of its release cadence in software packages and kernel releases. It, I believe its release cycle is every two years. So your packages are gonna be out of date by two years, maybe even longer. Your kernel is gonna be out of date by two years. You can backport and get your kernel a little bit newer. You gotta know a lot more technical detail to do that, which I did that on my server to kind of bring the kernel a little bit forward. But as far as daily driving Debian, I. I personally am not gonna do it. For my server, I love it because I wanna let that thing run and I don't wanna fuck with it. I wanna know that every time that I do an update that that thing has been tested thoroughly before I install an update. And that's what I love about Debian is it's rock, rock solid. It, it's, it's way more solid than Fedora in that fashion. But as far as a daily driver, God damn, those, those fucking packages are old. They're old, the kernel's old. I mean, you can kind of get around a few things here and there, but for a desktop experience, stick with everything else I've mentioned so far. Now, I've tried way, way more distributions than what I've gone over on this list, but this is the GOAT, the greatest of all time, Catchy OS. I run Arch, by the way, <laughs> with, with all jokes aside. Catchy OS is bleeding edge badass. It is Arch Linux, so, you're kind of a beta tester. Catch EOS, their team, they do most all of the packages themselves. It is, it's been a really phenomenal experience and it's only been like that recently after I learned how to properly set it up to where you can install updates and if you screw up an update, you can roll back. There's a way to do that. You do it whenever you install the operating system. I'm gonna make a separate video after this to show you how to properly set up Catchy OS. But we're not gonna cover all that here. But there is a way to set it up to where you install something, you fuck up an update, someone releases a bad kernel update or a package update and you're like, oh fuck, my system won't boot. There's a way to just roll that back with ease. But with Catchy OS, it's bleeding edge. So if you've got the latest and greatest hardware or you want the latest and greatest packages of anything you can think of, Catchy OS being Arch-based is going to have it. So once a kernel point release happens, the point release is a smaller release of a Linux kernel than a major version release. What's really, really fucking awesome about Catchy OS is they fine tune the kernel for the processor to just squeeze out every last bit of performance, especially if you're running AMD. Holy shit. You can get five, 10%, sometimes up to 15% performance increase in the way they tune their kernel. They also do that for the, the graphics cards. They, they really, really tune their distribution, their version of Arch. It's mwah, phenomenal. Like they, they squeeze out every last bit of performance they can and hats off to them, holy shit. Bravo guys, like it is, it's really impressive. Before I learned how to properly install and set this up to where you could roll back with incremental updates, <laughs> I, I had my system crash three or four times uh, from bad updates because with Arch, you are a beta tester. Now, with the way that you set this up uh, to where you can have a rollback feature, you're still a beta tester, but you've got a safety net to fall back on. The first handful of times that uh, I've installed this operating system, man, I really fucked myself over. I was like, God damn. I had one update after another just fuck me over. But luckily, since I do have a home server and stuff, any of my major important work was saved back to my to my uh, server. So it wasn't it wasn't too big of a deal, but you know, anytime anytime you install a bad kernel update or you didn't fully read the directions on the update that you were installing and you just pressed enter and you're like, "Oh shit. I just fucked up." Yeah. <laughs> um there <laughs> That'll bite you in the ass real quick. But I mean, that'll do that on any kind of distribution. 
um, if you don't have proper backups. But like I said, uh, if you watch my next video on on how to properly install this thing with rollbacks and all that, you won't you won't ever run into that issue. But yeah, uh, I shot myself in the foot a handful of times with this operating system until I got it properly installed. So there you have it, folks. There is my list of the different Linux distributions for desktop daily use that I recommend. I might try NixOS just for shits and giggles. God damn, I, I just, I don't see a use case for me for it. Um, now that I've got the proper rollbacks and backups set up for Catchy OS, I don't, I don't have the need to have an operating system that I can reproduce like NixOS. Um, NixOS is just, it's a very, very strange way they do things. I've looked into it a bit and I might do a video on it in the future if I ever go down that route. I'm kind of tossing up between the ideas of do I try Hyperland, the desktop environment, before NixOS or do I try NixOS before Hyperland? I haven't decided yet. Stay tuned, hit like, subscribe, and uh, you know, you'll see one of those videos drop. Till then, have a good one and go play with Linux. Learn something. Later.